project here is actually for the removal of the cigarette lighter. What I did was I took that out and I installed a USB 3 fast charging outlet. And unfortunately, I recorded the video once, but all in slow-mo. So now I'm just re-recording it kind of in reverse. Outlet's installed, but I'm going to show you how to remove your instrument cluster and the bottom cluster so that you can get to the back of this and then I'll cut in and splice in some of the additional footage that I had to show you the parts and how to do it. One of the extremely valuable kits I picked up on Amazon is this guy. It's a trim removal kit and it has just about anything and everything you need to get behind your console without damaging the plastic. These removal tools are a lifesaver if you're doing anything on the interior or even exterior of your truck. Removing the instrument cluster is the first part. Generally, you need two tools. What I like to do is kind of get my hand in the corner, feel for any gaps, and there's a nice little gap in the top corner here. One of the tools that is the thin edge, I can get it right in there, and I just kind of turn it like a key almost, and as you do, it opens up a little bit more. Take a second tool and kind of work it like a crowbar, just nice and slow, there you go. And then you just work your way around. So now that stays out, you can see the gap. And I just keep going down the opening. And as you go down and you turn it just a little at a time, you'll feel each clip start to come loose. You wanna take your time with this because if you don't, you'll bust the clips or you'll damage the edge on the instrument cluster and it just won't look right. So I'll pop these out and then show you what the back of it looks like. Really what it comes down to is just working those edges until they come out and not forcing it. Once you get all the way around, there's one last by the ignition. There's a couple sets of wires, one for the center of the cluster. You just pinch and pull. Then you have one for the ignition, same, pinch and pull. And the entire console's out. And store that in your back seat so you don't damage it. Next, you need one Phillips head screw here. We'll take that out, and then we'll work the edge of this bottom console to get that out. Hang on to the screws. Make sure you put them in your cup holder so you don't lose them. And repeat kind of the same process as the top. Just kind of give it a tug a little bit in a corner, and then once you find one of those corners to kind of give up a little slack, get your removal tool in there and just kind of turn it like a key just a little bit at a time and the clips start coming out. Now with this out there's a few more clips. You have the two USBs for the media port. Those are out. You can see the back a little bit. You have another one which is for the actual media port itself comes right out. You then have a bigger plug right in the back middle. You'll notice there's a red tab. What you want to do is you want to slide that red tab over. You can use your nail. And once that red tab is over, that allows you to press the tab on this bigger plug, give it a wiggle, and that comes out as well. So again, to show you the back, the big plug, the media plugs, the two USB plugs, and now you have everything out. So in the video I'll cut to for the slow-mo, the cigarette lighter is usually right here. And it's not really a cigarette lighter, it's just 12 volt DC power. It actually is a real pain to get out, but there's a trick where you can use a screwdriver and you push on the back, and I'll show you in the slow-mo, when you push on the back, it will slide out the front and you pull it right out. Then you have a plastic housing here where you just push the clips and it comes right out.
I'll show in the video right here, I was able to take this USB port, which is, if you can see it clearly, is threaded in the back, and I was able to screw it right in. So it's a nice clean fit. This plug right here is for the back of that 12 volt DC plug. Previous person wired in the remote on for the radio to the power of the plug. I want to preserve this plug. What I'm actually going to do is bring this wire wrap back, put in two wire taps, and I'll tap into the positive and negative, and right in the back of the plug is the positive and negative. That will make this active and run all my devices that I need. A very quick wiring tip. Use good connectors. Use the heat shrink ones, use insulated ones, use the right ones for the right application. The other big thing is you don't want to have to get into here and chase a loose wire. So when it comes to putting on ends, clean crimps are key. If you can, get yourself a set of ratchets. These really do a great job. You can actually stage whatever you're crimping down in there then it's ready to go. Once I get it in, this is a double crimp. It actually does two really nice ones, but I like to follow it up with my old pair here that has a, if you can see it, there's one point right there. I put the insulated connector right in there and give it a nice little squeeze and it just really locks that cable in there. I don't want to have to come back in here just to chase down this one cable. So a couple more crimp ends on this and I'll show you what the finished product looks like. Previous location for the cigarette lighter or the 12 volt DC adapter. Now I have a USB 3, two ports, and if I turn the accessories on, the other thing is it gives me a voltmeter and everything's working. Plugged in the phone, it starts charging. So as easy as that, two additional USB ports for everything else in the truck.